Yeah, you know what? That is a good question. What did happen to Arlong? You know, I mentioned it offhandedly in a video I made yesterday about Wano and the world government. I actually don't remember now. Why did why, why did Arlong even come up in that discussion video? Oh, wait, because I made the, uh, you know, if you can't pay the cash, then you're out with the trash. I'm four kids, Arlong, kids. <laughs> I made that joke. But yeah, I, I did the thing about him, like, writing the autobiography, you know, Tears of a Swordfish, you know, the Arlong uh, story. He's in prison and he's like, yes, my, my life was an unyielding amount of success, you know, when all of a sudden this rubber kid showed up at my theme park and bent my nose. And now my life is just horrible, you know, but we really just don't know because after the events of Arlong Park, um, it wasn't really explained what happened with Arlong and his crew. Now, this wasn't even touched upon until like hundreds of chapters later, right before Sabaody, when the Straw Hats arrived at Duval's base to save Hachi, and Sanji notices it's Hachi right away, even though he tries to disguise himself by covering himself with ink, but Sanji notices right away, and he's like, hey, how's Arlong doing these? these days. And, and Hachi, of course, you know, without missing a beat, is like, oh, Arlong? Yeah, him, Karubi, and Chu, they all got arrested by the Marines, but I got away, though. And we actually do get to see this in the cover page, which happened a little bit earlier in the manga. We got to see this cover story, Hachi's Seafloor Stroll, which starts off with this Marine ship uh, transporting, I guess, the rest of the Arlong crew, although we didn't get to, we don't get to see them there, but they're apparently on board, and Hachi manages to get away and jump off the side of the ship and, you know, fishmen. So he's able to just swim away really fast. And that kicks off his cover story where he eventually runs into Kami and Papa Goo and they start the takoyaki stand. Okay, well, that's that's well and good, but that's all we got. You know, we don't actually get to see Arlong or anything like that. Hachi just says, oh, yeah, they were being transported by a marine ship to some prison. Might have been impaled down, might have been some other prison, and he hasn't heard from them since. You know, it was kind of funny because yesterday when I made that video and a lot of people were in the comments and there were quite a few people that were like, wait a second, I thought... I thought Arlong was dead, and I'm like, well, I can't really blame you for arriving at that, you know, conclusion there. So, you know, let's do this. Let's go a little bit of a, of a time travel episode here. Let's go back to the East Blue, all right? That's a fun place to hang out, right? Hanging out in the East. Okay, so, you know, a lot of the other uh, villains, the antagonists of the uh, East Blue saga that Luffy laid the gummo gummo no smackdown on, you know, we at least got a little bit of, you know, what occurred after the battle, okay? With the situation with Buggy, I don't think I need to explain explain that. You know, Buggy is now, of course, one of the greatest uh, characters in all of One Piece still to this very day. Um, even before Buggy, we had Morgan. And Morgan, after the battle, uh, he was thrown in custody by the Marines, and then Garp was there. However, he managed to get away and escape, and, um, you know, it's been a while since we've touched base with Captain Morgan, but he apparently managed to escape, and he was out to sea floating around. We see him in Django's cover story. Um, so I, I assume he either got to some random island, and he's living there. Um, it, he's kind of, um, you know, I don't know how well he could seep into society with the giant axe for a hand. <laughs> Maybe he went, he's like, oh, uh, I'll be the island's new lumberjack. And he's like, well, you certainly are qualified, sir. But at least we got something from Morgan. It wasn't like Zoro cut down Morgan and we got nothing after that. Um, Kuro, okay, Kuro is a little, he's also kind of one that's sort of like, we don't know where he's at right now, okay? So in the manga, anyway, I went back and read this. Um, after Luffy bells Kuro right in the noggin and he gets knocked out, Luffy Luffy makes the declaration of like, you know, oh, I'm gonna be king of the pirates. Kuro is unconscious when he says that, so it's not like, it's like, you remember my name, I'm gonna be king of the pirates, I'm Monkey D. Luffy, and Kuro's like, <laughs> so, Nami's like, I don't, I don't think he can hear you. I'm pretty sure he's knocked out, but whatever. Luffy then proceeds to pick up his his um, motionless body and just chuck it toward the rest of the Black Cat Pirates, who they grab. And they uh, we see this one tiny panel with the rest of the Black Cat Pirates getting on their ship and uh, I guess just sailing away. Uh, we see them sailing away at the beginning of Django's cover story. We assume Kuro is on the ship and... He's alive, I suppose, um, you know, but beyond that, we don't really get to see more of him in the manga. Now, in the anime, uh, near the end of the East Blue Saga, it did kind of tie up that loose end where uh, after Luffy gets his first bounty, his 30 million berry bounty, we cut over to various scenes over the East. We get to see Full Body again, and we get to see Kuro again. Kuro is on the ship, just looking rather forlorn and just dejected by his, his life. He's just like, oh man, I didn't want to be a pirate, and here 
here I am back at being a pirate. I mean, in all honesty, he should have probably just been happy with the butler job that he had, really. He's like, I don't want to be a pirate anymore. I'm going to go be a butler. I'm like, okay, I mean, it's a peaceful life. You don't have to worry about the Marines killing you. Yes, but now I have this convoluted plan to get all the money. I'm like, why? He's like, so you want to be a pirate without being a pirate. Kuro, decide, all right? Do you want the happy life in the country, you know, with no worries of the Marines attacking you? Or do you want to have a life on the high seas with the Marines attacking you? You can't have both, okay? So anyway, yeah, that, that was the situation with Kuro. In the anime, at least, we did get some e explanation of what happened to him, okay? Krieg, uh, Krieg was knocked out by Luffy. Gein then threw all the crew on a tiny little dinghy, which really doesn't look like they could... <laughs> That, that boat could hold them. It looks like they would maybe be about, like, a few yards away from the Baratier, and the whole thing would just sink in the water, but, all right, so, Gein, I guess, brought Krieg and the rest of his crew with them, and most of them are poisoned from the gas, Gein included, so, they're probably not gonna, they're not gonna be around for much anymore, but at least that was something. Arlong, I'm telling you, I went back and read the chapter, I looked at the anime, here's what happened at the end of Arlong Park, okay, so Luffy and Arlong have their big epic battle, Arlong's breaking out the giant sword, he's biting pillars in half, they get into the cartography room at the top of Arlong Park, Luffy sees that this is the place that was essentially Nami's prison cell for all of her childhood and her teenage years, and so he uses, I believe it's battle axe to, boom, destroy the entire structure of Arlong Park, um, Arlong's nose is bent in the process, and you just see him there, lying in the rubble, just defeated, like, I, I, I couldn't pay the cash, so I'm the trash, I suppose, and then that's it, no, seriously, that's it, pretty much right after that, the town just like, yay, they did it, they defeated him, and they just started running around the beaches, carrying the flags, and having a big party in town, um, now, Nezumi, who's that rat bastard, he was the captain of the marines that was in league with Arlong there, he kind of arrives in the town and he's like, ah yes, I didn't ever suspect you could defeat Arlong and his pirates, mm, yes, but now you understand of course that uh, the island is now under control of me, Captain Nezumi, so you will bring me all of the money, <laughs> and Nami smacks him upside the face with her staff, so... Way to go, Nami. Go pathetic. Um, but even after that, we don't really get much of uh, Arlong. It's more focused on Nezumi leaving the island and going back to his base and, you know, reporting to like, I, I have a report to make, you know, Monkey D. Luffy, you must catch this boy at all costs! You know, and he, that's how Luffy got his first bounty, right? Because, you know, Captain Nezumi, you know, uh, stated how much of a threat he was, right? We don't get any more explanation on Arlong. A at some point, he was picked up by a rather large marine prison ship and transported to some prison somewhere. Um, I like to assume that while Nezumi was busy doing all his thing and everything, yeah, um, another marine ship, probably with a more competent captain or commodore or somebody, decided to capture them, because that, that doesn't make any sense for the town just to be like, yay, Arlong's been knocked out, and Arlong Park is in ruins, and their whole crew are still there, and they could wake up at any moment and come into town and kill us all, but let's party! You gotta sing it tonight, you gotta do it tonight, hold that spatula proudly you gotta cook it up so yeah, I mean, that's that, that's what they did though, so it seems like, yeah, something had to happen in the intermediate time there for Arlong and his crew to be captured and then transported safely away from the island, you know, for the islanders of Kokoyashi Village to be so happy and content with their, like, okay, we won, it's okay, they're not gonna come back and burn our town down, we're all, we'll be okay, they're all gone now, right? So, yeah, that's the situation. Now, where did Arlong go? That's, that's the other question. Alright, so, the first thing I I popped into my mind was impale down impale down now granted 20 million berries which was Arlong's bounty it's not really that impressive in the grand scheme of things especially when you get into the grand line but it was stated that before Luffy's bounty of 30 million Arlong had the highest bounty in all of the East Blue he was quite literally a big fish in a small pond <laughs> He was quite literally like, oh, I'm a fishman, I'm badass, I'm super strong and everything, and I'm taking over this island, and he was probably gonna, you know, not stop until he took over the entirety of the East. Actually, I can kind of see that from Arlong's perspective, um, because, you know, he got the crap beat out of him by Kizaru, and he got punched by Jinbei, and after the whole thing with Fisher Tiger and everything, and he did go to prison at one point, I think he was imprisoned and impaled down, but he was actually pardoned. 
So he didn't escape from Impel Down, like no prisoner before, you know, the, the mass breakout and, and also Shiki and also Morley have actually escaped from Impel Down. But um, no, Arlong's release was more of a conditional thing because of Jinbei joining the Warlords. Okay, so he got pardoned and released. And I think Arlong, after that whole mess, after getting captured by Kizaru, after being beaten up by Jinbei, after the death of Fisher Tiger, after all the crap that that happened, he's like, you know what? I, I'm gonna go to a place where I know I can take it over. I'm gonna go to the East Blue. That's the most peaceful ocean, serene landscape in the entire world. I could definitely take over those guys. So, um, Impel Down, though, I mean, made sense because 20 million, I mean, that's higher than Buggy's bounty. I mean, look right here. Buggy's bounty was 15 million, and he was placed in level one of Impel Down. Now, I understand, I'm assuming they don't throw every random riffraff in Impel Down. I mean, if that was the case, like, like, if you look at Impel Down, just the layout of it, level one which requires the lowest bounty out of the out of the levels is actually pretty small compared to the rest it's the smallest levels right so if they just take every single pirate that had any bounty and threw them into level one you know that'd be overpopulation so they don't throw every single pirate that has a bounty and impel down um but they would definitely throw in probably like the captains of those crews so buggy had a bounty of 15 million not really all that impressive even in the east well i guess in the east it was kind of halfway impressive but they figured okay well he's the the captain of the crew, so we'll throw him an impel down, all right? Um, like, for Karubi and Chu, uh, Karubi had a bounty of 9 million, and Chu had a bounty of, I think, like, 6.5 million. I think it wouldn't make sense for them to be an impel down, but it would make sense for them to go to some rather random prison. But Arlong, with a bounty of 20 million, which was even higher than Buggies, would definitely be either in level 2 or, at the very least, level 1 of impel down. Now, to be fair, I mean, we didn't really focus that much on those levels, because most of of it was just like with level one it was pretty much just luffy and buggy storming right through level one and then jumping right down to level two so arlong could have very well have been in level one and luffy and buggy just never saw him uh likewise with level two they got down to level two they ran into mr uh three and they immediately went to go fight the sphinx and the sphinx you know destroyed the floor and they ended up in level three and they continued on downward right um but i still don't think that arlong was in impel down because the mass riot that they did the mass breakout that occurred you know which levels were primarily affected by that? It was level two. Level two and level one, because those are the ones, you know, Mr. Three, Galdino, and Buggy kind of snuck back up to the upper floors, and they started releasing all the prisoners in level two and level one, and like, come on, brothers, let's do this, yeah. So, if Arlong was located, I mean, he would probably be in level two, if we're just going by that level there. I mean, yeah, maybe level one, but level two I'm just going to throw out there, because 20 million is, you know, a decent number. Um... If he was located there, then they would have released him too, right? Unless they decided not to, unless they like, oh, that fishman guy is scary. I'm not opening that one. Kind of like a Douglas Bullet moment, you know? Blackbeard's in the basement, level six, the worst criminals in history. He's like, Zay ha ha ha! I will release all the prisoners if you defeat the other ones in your cell. Vasco shot, you're with me. Oh, San Juan Wolf, you're a big boy. You get over here, Katarina Davon, my lady. Alvaro Pizarro, let's corrupt some kingdoms. And uh, Douglas Bullet. Oh, uh, uh. that's when Blackbeard kind of like he wet himself a little bit there, and he's like, uh, "Not you, not you. I'm, 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 I'm glad you're alive, but not you." So yeah, they maybe they had that moment up there where Buggy's letting loose everybody. He's like, "Come on, everyone, take a pipe. Come on, let's fight." And then he sees Arlong in the corner, and he's like, "Uh, oh, not not saw too far along. He's the most dangerous guy in here, probably." And then Buggy had a moment where he left, you know. But I, I, it's just it, like. You're going to focus on, like, okay, you have Crocodile, who's a former villain. You're going to have Jinbei there. Um, you know, all the members of Baroque Works that are thrown in Impel Down. You, you'd figure, like, maybe Oda would have viewed it like, okay, to throw Arlong in in that mix, that would just be too complicated. But you'd figure if he was there, we definitely would have seen him. Even if it's just, like, honestly, what they could have done is this. They could have done something where they released Arlong, and Arlong is there. He's off to the side, and he's like, yeah, I'm out of here. And he doesn't even worry about the ride. He just immediately goes throughout Impel Down on his own, somehow finds a way out because he's a fishman. So he's not limited by the restriction of the Calm Bell. Like, that was one of the big reasons why Impel Down was put there because, oh, you got the Calm Bell. You got all these sea kings roaming around. You can't just jump in the water and swim away. Well, if you're a fishman or a mermaid, you kind of can. 
So maybe Arlong was like, oh, thanks, clown bastard, whatever, get out of my way. And then Arlong just ran off on his own, found some other way to get out of the, um, to get out of the prison. Like, there was that one place we saw it impel down where the blue gory would, um, leave. Like, they would go into this little area where they would jump under the water. Actually, you know what, I can draw it because now we have a new feature on the channel. We got a whiteboard! Yeah! Oh, man, I love the whiteboard. Whiteboard! This is real time, too. I'm not adding this in later. Whiteboard! All right, so you got Impel Down, right? You got Impel Down. It's kind of shaped like a cake. You know, you got all these different layers here. I think level three and four are the same size. And it's like, okay, so this is... Yeah, this is... Uh, wait, no, I screwed that up. Wait, no. Okay, now we're back on track now. Yeah, like this is this is Impel Down. This is Impel Down right here. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So uh, they have these little areas, though, that are like this. You know, where Blue Gory can actually, um, and I'm actually, let me change the color here. I can change the color. Can you guys change the color? This is awesome. All right, you have this little area here where Blue Gories can come out and kind of defeat the giant Sea Kings here. And, you know, this, this is the Sea King. This is, a, this is an evil Sea King. So they, like, kill a Sea King and then take some of the meat and they come back and they go back into the prison. That's how the prison actually gets, like, um, food stuff and supplies that way, all right? So, yeah, 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 whiteboard came in handy, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, maybe Arlong found one of those rooms and he's like, oh, that's my way out and just jumped in and just swam away. <laughs> you know, that, honestly, I would be most happy with that instance. And it's just Arlong left before the riot really got crazy. Arlong left before they calmed commandeered the battleship before the Venom Demon shit happened. Um, you know, Arlong just figured out another way out. You know, while Buggy and Mr. Three were just releasing everyone, okay? And Buggy and Mr. Three, they didn't know Arlong personally, like Luffy did, you know, or like Nami did, so there was no reason for him, them to bring it up later. Like, oh yeah, we released a bunch of prisoners, but some random, you know, sawtooth, you know, swordfish, fishman, blue guy ran away. It was a, So, uh, honestly, if that was the situation, I'd be 100% cool with that, but as that doesn't seem to be the scenario, I guess right now, I, I can foresee two possibilities, okay? Now, one of these possibilities, bear with me on this, you might not be perfectly fine with this, but I think it makes sense, okay? Possibility number one. Arlong is completely reformed, feels genuine guilt for what he did to Nami and her mother, and her whole village, and is now living in a peaceful village somewhere in the South Blue as a baker who has a fish-themed bakery that he makes, like, like octopus muffins. Like, not octopus muffins, but, like, muffins in the shape of an octopus with, like, delicious cinnamon frosting. Or he has, like, tentacle cake. Okay, that just sounded really kinky. But, you know, that's, that's one possibility. Just... Keep that on the back burner, and I'm throwing that possibility out because the second possibility is a lot more likely and also a lot more dark. Um, when they were captured by the Marines, um, the Tenryubito decided, hey, these are fishmen that are pirates that are breaking the law. Send them, don't send them to Impel Down, don't send them to prison, send them to Marijua. And Arlong and Karubi and Chu and the rest of the Arlong crew are now currently working as slaves underground at Marijua. That is a very likely series of events that could occur, especially with the whole history that Tenryubito have, and now Jinbei is no longer a member of the Warlords. Um, you know, maybe, maybe something happened where they were at prison for a time, but then after Jinbei defected, you know, the Tenryubito were like, oh, well, he's no longer there, because the whole reason that they got released and the whole reason, you know, that that happened was because Jinbei joined the world government and or the, you know, the Warlords, and that made a treaty and everything, but now that's no more. So maybe, yeah, they were like, oh, we want some fishmen as slaves again, because they, because that's what Tenry Beto, because they're 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 assholes that way. They're like, oh, they're stronger, so they can lift even more. You know, so that's what they do. So they were like, yeah, let's let's bring some of these criminals that were, um, you know, attacking this village in the east, and let's bring them over to Marijua, You know, and I mean, Arlong did some really messed up things in the east and all that stuff, but. The whole idea of this perpetual slavery thing that exists of the Tenryubito is eventually going to fall in the One Piece world. So, man, I could actually see that, like, because Arlong was running away from that stuff, right? I don't think Arlong was ever a slave himself in life. Um, I don't think he was ever captured. 
uh, but he grew up with this intense hatred of humans that was fueled all the more just by the death of Fisher Tiger and everything, okay? And then eventually his own capture and all the stuff that he did, right? And that was his attempt at revenge was setting up shop in Kokoyashi Village, right? Okay, so obviously, you know, he was a bad guy, all right? Out of, out of everybody that Luffy fought against in the East... I mean, Morgan was very corrupted, uh, Buggy was just Buggy, uh, Kuro was, um, very conniving with his plan to try to have a sad, uh, kill Kaya, so he wasn't nice, uh, Don Krieg was just, you know, typical pirate, but, um, you know, Arlong, it came from some real hatred there, Arlong genuinely hated humans and genuinely wanted to make them suffer as much as possible, and he wanted that basically kind of god complex, kind of that thing where, like, I, it's my turn to rule over the humans, and I get to tell what, who gets to survive and what they do. They, they work for me now. You know, it was that desire because of what happened to the Fishman race. Okay, so imagine after all that was over, after his, you know, reign of power at Arlong Park had ended, then he gets, now he's like working that conveyor belt thing underneath Marijua. He's helping to run that freaking, that, uh, that travel Vader thingy. You know, like that's what he's doing right now, okay? And the whole institution of slavery that exists in One Piece, that eventually has to crumble at the hands of the Revolutionary Army. They're going to invade and take it over. But I wonder what Arlong would do. If Arlong really is there and the Revolutionary Army busts in and they save all, they free all the slaves and everything, and then Arlong's there, then they're freed. Like, what would Arlong do at that point? Do you think Arlong would... Um, you know, you know, go back to just doing what he was doing, like, just go back, because Arlong seems like the kind of guy that will always hate humans until the end of time, and if he was thrust into that slavery, then he would hate them all the more, he would never have a moment where it was like, I, I don't think Arlong would, the way that he thinks about things, I don't think he would sit back and be like, hey, humans enslaved us, and then I enslaved humans, and then they enslaved me personally, maybe I should have a different thought, of, maybe like, I should view this in a different way, Maybe a way that Jinbei or Fisher Tiger were kind of looking at this. Arlong doesn't seem the kind of guy that would have enough brain power for that. Arlong just seems like the kind of guy, Those damn humans! Damn it! As soon as I get back to freaking the sea, I'm gonna rally power together and I'm gonna, you know, make a bigger and stronger Arlong Park than ever before! That seems kind of like what Arlong would do in that scenario. Uh, but hey, who knows? Maybe Karubi and Chu, maybe they might try to calm him down because they're his childhood friends. Maybe they'd be like, Sir, you know, Arlong... Yeah, they did horrible stuff to us and, and the race and everything, but now it's over. Can't you see? This is the turning point. The Revolutionary Army is here. They've saved all the slaves. The Tenryubito are falling. Or, oh, oh, how about this? How about this? Instead of Arlong getting mad at all humans, maybe they could just direct all of his rage at the Tenryubito specifically. So if the Revolutionary Army were storming Marijua and Arlong gets out and he's like, those damn humans, I'm going to take them all out. It's like, da, 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 da. Hey, how about not all the humans? Those are the assholes that are actually imprisoning you. They're they're the ones that, you know, we're trying to bring down right now, the Revolutionary Army. We bring those guys down, then this whole thing just crashes down. Isn't that what you want? Isn't that what Fisher Tiger would have wanted? For this whole system of slavery to be abolished in one fell swoop? And Arlong, I don't think, would, you know, disagree with that. And Chu and Karubi are there and be like, yeah, sir, master, let's do this. And be like, fine, all right, then we'll fight. And then you have, like, Arlong teaming up with, like, Dragon and Sabo and Koala and Ivankov as they raid the God City and they all just start beating the crap out of the Tenryubito. Oh, and also... Also, I completely forgot about this until just now in editing, but Koala would also be there with the Revolutionary Army, and Arlong would know Koala. Now, Koala and Arlong, I mean, they, they weren't really that close. I mean, Jinbei and Fisher Tiger warmed up to Koala a lot more than Arlong did. But, you know, you kind of feel that a little bit there, like, you know, Koala is still alive and she would be able to remind Arlong about, like, what Fisher Tiger was trying to do and everything and how, you know, he, he I mean, like I said, I don't think he's going to change there on the spot, but maybe at least, like, help direct his anger at the people that actually deserve it, the Tenryubito, than just humanity as a whole, you know what I mean? Like, they could free Arlong from prison, and Arlong would be there like, I can't believe I got freed from this by a bunch of dirty humans. Humans are all crap. And then Koala would step up, and Arlong would see her and have a moment where he's like, Oh, it's, it's you. I can't believe you're still alive after all these years. And then Koala actually reminds him about Fisher Tiger, and he's like, you need, We need you right now. We need your strength. If you can help us, we can end this, and so no one is ever enslaved again. And Arlong would, I think at that point, have, maybe like I said, not a redemption moment, but a moment of like, all right, well, he's going to help, so that's something, right? I can see that.
<laughs> because the Tenryu Beto, I, 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 I don't think they can be reformed. I don't like. I don't think Arlong can really be reformed either. But I also don't think the Tenryu Beto can. Um, you, you know, it's it's hasn't been directly stated what Dragon plans to do with them. He plans on abolishing this Tenryu Beto system, not the whole of the world government, just the Tenryu Beto. If that implies that just he wants to kill them all because what are you going to do i mean you could keep them in prison i guess kind of like a sim a symbolic thing sort of like you imprison all of the tenry beto so they can watch how much the world is going to change without their influence or kind of like oh you lived your life in a wash and abject luxury well now you spend the rest of your existence behind bars um i don't know what perspective dragon would take there uh, if he would just be like, just end them immediately, because Dragon seems like the kind of no-nonsense guy in that regard. I don't see Dragon pulling out that much sympathy for the Tenryu Beto at the end of the day, especially what they did to Kuma and everything. So Dragon might just be like, the quickest and most effective way of handling this would just be to like, storm the city and then just <coughs> take them all out. And then after that, we start anew. I could see that going down as honestly the main, you know, uh, mode of operations that Dragon's going to go about it. But, you know, the, the slaves they free are going to maybe help with that, and, and Arlong might be part of that group. So definitely think about that. But yeah, uh, let me know below what you think happened to Arlong, and for that matter, if you think Kuro or Krieg are ever going to, like, reappear in the story, or Morgan is going to pop back in at some point, maybe near the end, it's sort of like a bookend. Like, oh yes, here are the original enemies of Luffy back in the East Blue. Well, now they're making their own uh, appearances at the very end of the story helping out the crew in some way shape or form even if it's not like a direct way you know like maybe Kuro pops back in again maybe Gein was still alive this whole time and then maybe Arlong is helping out with the revolution at Marijua who knows let me know um thanks for watching everybody oh Barry you gave your hat to Nami that's a nice gesture anyway thanks for watching have a good one everybody signing out